diets have changed, habits have changed, people's lives are, are busier, you know, parents are working, people don't cook as much, you know, they're using more processed foods, foods in bags and foods that are quick and things you can microwave and people are going out more and it's more fast food so they don't know what's in the food. Then, you know, everything is convenient but nobody is thinking about, well, what does that convenience cost? Okay. <laughs> Uh, so my name is Donna Pertel. I'm a registered dietitian nutritionist. I've worked in that field for 25 years. So American eating in general is very fast. We tend to be a little bit more disconnected from our food than other cultures are. Many of them are more interested in the quality experience of eating, whereas in the United States we tend to value quantity over quality. Some countries have a very close connection to their heritage and their culture. So take, for example, um, eating in Italy or in Ghana or in Mexico. Many of those have a very significant and more narrow food identity, whereas the United States has a very broad food identity. I know a lot of people would consider like McDonald's to be American food, so. In the United States, big chain restaurants are really prevalent. The United States also has a history of very inexpensive food. So proportionally in terms of our income, Americans spend much less on food than other people do around the world. And so that makes food very inexpensive and large chain restaurants then have the ability to maximize how much food they can produce and the cost to them is very inexpensive. And so Americans, again, without that identity, that cultural, that strong cultural identity, it makes it very easy to access one of those restaurants, eat out, and then enjoy the food and come home and not have that family cooking experience that other parts of the world experience. I definitely have the knowledge that a lot of the food that I might be eating isn't what I really would like to consume. I know that it's not super healthy. I know that a lot of the way that the food is made might not be super clean, but I still eat it because it's good and it's easy and it's convenient. It's a really interesting outcome when you look at individuals who can afford to spend more money on food versus those who can't. Eating well is very challenging. It's not that it's not doable. It is doable and it is affordable, but you have to be well educated to understand the food sources that are available to you to, to eat well and inexpensively. So typically what happens, because people don't have that understanding, they choose what's most easily accessible and readily available, which tends to be a lot of pre-packaged foods, very few fruits and vegetables, and vegetables and fruits have the greatest impact on our health and our well-being. And so without those, People who aren't able to access those kinds of foods as readily have many significant health consequences. For a long time, people thought there were no hungry people in the United States because many people appeared to be well fed. But now we know that obesity is very common in hunger, unstable or insecure households. That's particularly alarming because we have so many foods available in the United States. There's certainly a advertising drive for a lot of fast food um, restaurants to lower prices as much as they can and offer value meals and such. Um, and I would say that would certainly be more helpful to lower income people. Um, and so there's, I think there's definitely drives by those restaurants to appeal to lower income families um, and individuals. Michelle Obama's campaign, the Let's Move campaign, I think did a world of good to try to help people understand the connection between the food that we eat and the importance of moving. So I think that was a really important first step and included a lot of great things that people could do. I would have liked to have seen it gone further in terms of food and what the American public is choosing in terms of their food. Corporate influence in our food supply is extensive 
and uh, more so even than in many other countries around the world. Walk into any supermarket and there are huge numbers of products available that are produced by food companies. And their ability at the national level to lobby and request that our politicians are cautious or not overly influential in what they're making available to consumers is really quite strong. I do like though that grocery stores have looked at consumer trends and have identified that most consumers do like to purchase vegetables and fruits and so those tend to be earlier in a supermarket which is really nice and does help I think set people up for better food choices. Mm -hmm.